intend to do exactly that. I am going to incite because the time has come for fighting, not talking. And if that means inciting people, I'm going to do exactly that. In the grounds of Oxford University, a storm brews. Against this stinking, rotten, corrupt institution. Animal rights activists gather in the shadow of their latest target, a giant animal testing laboratory. If we need to, we got to tear that place down with our bare hands. Two years ago, campaigners stopped a similar facility going ahead in Cambridge, and now they want to do the same at Oxford. They're led by activist Mel Broughton, once jailed for conspiring to cause arson. You can stop your discipline. You can stop it. I've had enough of them. This is about anger, pure bloody fury. And you're going to feel it, Oxford University. You're going to feel it like you never felt it before. The war starts here. Despite a court injunction restricting their movements, protesters are urged to storm the half-finished lab. Flustered, the police move in. This is the moderate core of an increasingly radicalised animal rights movement. Behind the scenes is a hard nucleus of militants. British police say they've evolved into extremist cells and are prepared to bomb animal researchers into submission. Oxford University and the British government can't afford to let this $50 million laboratory be stopped by protesters. At stake are multi-billion dollar industries from research to pharmaceuticals. But the animal rights movement has also drawn a line in the sand, and so the genteel city of Oxford is bracing for a long, hard battle. Oxford is one of the oldest and most respected universities in the world. From its ranks have sprung 12 Nobel Prizes for medical science. But those breakthroughs, according to some of Britain's leading scientists, were achieved only through the use of animal research. It is difficult to think of a treatment or a preventive measure that's been developed in the past that hasn't involved animals. Um, anesthetics, painkillers, uh, vaccines, treatments for heart disease. The only way to, to test new surgical procedures, of course, is on animals. And anybody who has a novel procedure, and think of the miraculous procedures we've got now for transplantation, for operation inside the eye, for heart operations, bypass and so on, all of those had to be developed on, on, on animals. Neurobiologist Colin Blakemore left his Oxford research post three years ago. He now heads Britain's Medical Research Council, which last year dispensed the equivalent of more than a billion dollars of public money. And they're not Professor Blakemore is a passionate communicator, keen to inspire a new generation of scientists and doctors. They worked um, mainly on, on cats and then later on monkeys. But his outspoken support of animal research made him a key hate figure for more than a decade. Two letter bombs that were sent to my home, one of them a very potent device, half a pound of explosive, packed with needles that they said had HIV-infected blood in them. In a mailing tube, 
um, arranged so that if the cap had been taken out of the mailing tube, it would have exploded. That was delivered to the home, to my home, when I and my wife both happened to be out. It was taken from the mailman by our teenage daughters. Thank God they didn't open it to have a peep inside to see what it was, and they left it, and I discovered it late at night and realized what it was likely to be. Paul Bolam's research is funded by the Medical Research Council. So more people who speak out than the... Uh... An expert on Parkinson's disease, his research, which he hopes may one day produce a cure, entails studying the brains of mice. So have you ever sort of been involved in... Though many prominent scientists have been harassed into silence, Professor Bolam chose to speak out because he believes animal testing is carried out only under the strictest guidelines. They've not suffered in the slightest throughout their life, and of course they, they have to be terminated at the end of the experiment. Terminated so that they die at the end of yeah, the experiment? Yeah, they die at the end of the experiment. Yeah, that's probably a bad word to use. We put them down at the end of the experiment. So they've not suffered at all during that time. Oxford University says its new lab will consolidate several older ones spread out around the campus. The university wouldn't allow us to film inside the laboratory, but they gave us this recent video. If there is no problem, why is there such secrecy about what goes on in these laboratories? Very simply, it's extremists. People have been targeted. Individuals have been targeted. Their families have been targeted and their neighbors have been targeted. Last year throughout Britain, nearly three million procedures were carried out on lab animals. Labs must be licensed and scientists are legally obliged to use alternatives to animals whenever possible. Since 1997, it's been illegal to use animals for testing on cosmetics. These are some of the mice, guinea pigs and rabbits commonly used in these tests at Wickham. Most people just couldn't stomach this kind of footage. There's so many horrors out there that... Three years ago, Keith Mann broke into a lab and freed 600 mice he believed were being used to test Botox, the world's favoured wrinkle smoother. These show scenes that we were never meant to see. He views any kind of animal research as extreme cruelty and believes scientists lie about the benefits of testing and use animals because they're cheap. Is it your understanding that almost any test that involves animals now could be done without using animals? Absolutely, absolutely. They're misleading us, they're taking us up the wrong path. You know, we're putting billions and billions of pounds into experimenting on our animals and we're ignoring human beings. You know, we're passing us safe, very dangerous chemicals and drugs in laboratory animals, putting them on the market and they're then causing people harm. So, you know, it's a fallacy that by experimenting on another several hundred million animals over the next 20 years. We're going to find these cures for human illnesses that we haven't found in the last hundred years by experimenting on a hundred million animals or more. The airlift serves to rescue animals from cruelty and to sabotage the smooth operation of those engaged in their exploitation. Linked to a militant group called the Animal Liberation Front, Keith Mann spent more than six years in prison for crimes he committed in the name of animal rights. Over 1,000 chickens were liberated from this factory farm in Hampshire. Released from jail a few months ago, he's still deemed a risk by the police. <laughs> Do you have a problem with committing a crime in order to get your message across? No. How else do we get our message across? There isn't a democracy in this country anymore. There's no other legitimate way. Exactly how far would you go to get your point across? Well, I've gone as far as I need to go to get my point across, I think. Um, I broke the law and I exposed the reality to the public. Um, and, I, you know, I implore, I would implore if I was able to, more people to do exactly that.
He says animal rights activists have exposed extreme acts of cruelty over the years. This disturbing video, secretly recorded nine years ago, revealed workers abusing beagles during a laboratory procedure. And a warning, it's difficult to watch. I'm really getting fucking bad with you! Every fucking time point! The video was filmed at one of the biggest commercial laboratories in the world, Huntingdon Life Sciences, based in Cambridgeshire. It incensed those both for and against animal testing. Every time any member of our staff witness that video, they, they, I'm sure they feel physically sick, as we all do. You know, what you saw there should never, ever happen in a laboratory. It shouldn't happen in the breeding kennels. It shouldn't happen in the home. We've got a very good light in here, have we, Andrew? Can no, see no, 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 I can't see it, mate, no. The technicians were convicted of cruelty and sentenced to community service. <laughs> no, no. Huntingdon changed management, but years later, the repercussions continue. We're 10 years on now, and yet it's still being brought up because it was such an awful thing to have occurred, so you can understand that. But please, you know, we have moved on, the company's moved on, the culture has moved on, let's put it behind us. But activists weren't prepared to move on. Puppies poisoned with weed killer! Disgusting! To them, Huntingdon Life Sciences became public enemy number one. What has gone so tragically wrong with you that you're prepared to sell your love and your compassion for five pounds an hour? Huntingdon Life Sciences is closing down! The campaign then broadened its strategy, targeting businesses and individuals that often had only remote links to the lab. Shut your big mouth before Tactics included so-called home visits in the middle of the night, arson attacks and hate mail. Do you feel it's legitimate to harass people? Absolutely, yeah. If they're not prepared to listen to reasonable arguments and stop the violence they're using, then of course it is. In January, a farm breeding guinea pigs for research was forced out of business after a six-year hate campaign. We've only got uh, two officers, three officers in the field. The owners of Dali Oaks, as well as workers and neighbours, were targeted with threats and violence. The final straw was the desecration of a grave in October 2004. The remains of Gladys Hammond, a relative of the farm's owners, were stolen. Five people have since been charged with blackmail-related offences. For me, the gloves are off, you know. The fact that they've stolen some bones out of a graveyard in order to highlight those facts and do something about it, I would commend I've got no problem with that. Stop the Oxford Animal Stop the Oxford Five years ago, British police established a national unit to combat animal liberation extremism. After extensive surveillance, they've pinpointed up to 500 hardcore activists. Grab the Oxford Animal Lab! Grab the Oxford Animal Lab! 
A typical profile of them would be anarchist type tendencies. They will be vegan, nothing wrong with that of course, and they will be full-time committed. Working from a secret location, Superintendent Steve Pearl heads the extremism unit. He says at the core of the activists are 40 to 50 extremists prepared to break the law. They're set up in a quasi-terrorist cell-like structures um, and they use the website to communicate um, their targets to each other um, once they've done the research on who they're going to target next. It makes my blood boil, I must admit. It makes my blood boil that we can do that to other species and just accept it. People like me are criticised and called terrorists and violent and all this, and we don't hurt anybody. Yet all this kind of cruelty and violence is, is carrying on every single day. And we accept it as some, some kind of normal behaviour. Every fortnight, protesters gather in the heart of London's financial district known as the city. They say money makes the world go round. Well, money certainly keeps on sitting on life sciences in business. For seven years, they've been campaigning to close down the Huntingdon Research Lab. If you take away the lifeblood of the companies, then no business can operate if there's nobody to work with them. So do you know what this company in particular does? I don't particularly know what this company is, other than that they're financiers, so they're probably some sort of brokers or something. I don't really know. We target even like Thomas Cook the holiday companies and that because they send people to Mauritius where they breed the monkeys that are sent to these laboratories. So we will target anybody and most of the companies you see have pulled out because they realise and they don't want the hassle. Such pressure has rendered Huntingdon a financial pariah. We do not have a checking account. We cannot get a checking account for the company at any high street bank in the UK. We cannot find an insurance company that will actually take on our cover. So this is where the government particularly have been very supportive and have actually stepped forward in order to provide us with those kinds of facilities. Hi, Donna. Can I give you a leaflet? At Oxford University, putting a lot of money into trying to open a new laboratory to carry out experiments on animals. They're not. They are. Spurred on by their successors, activists like Keith Mann vow to continue the fight. Absolutely. We can't call ourselves civilised while we're behaving like this, can we? It is. Thank you. Thank you. Under the terms of his conviction, he's barred from approaching the Oxford lab, but in Dorset, more than 100 kilometres away, he does his part. It's just about Oxford University. They're trying to open a new laboratory to ex carry out more experiments on animals. I've got cats. Yeah, they're doing some oh. awful things. We've got some footage of one cat that they've taken its brain out and it's actually alive, still outside the body of the cat. They've kept the cat alive with its brain outside its body. I'll swap you. There's a vast movement growing across the world of people who are violently opposed to what they're doing without using violence to stop them. And whether they build that lab or not, you know, they're going to suffer the consequences for it. In Oxford, it's another day of confrontation. As ever, the animal rights movement is here. But today marks the birth of a new campaign, one which supports the Oxford lab. No more for it! No more for it! Animal people wanted here! Human beings come first, build the Oxford lab! Human beings come first, build the Oxford lab! My message today, my message to the extremists, is that you will never win. Yeah! Every vile action of harassment, of intimidation or of violence undermines any legitimacy 
your cause ever had. Fed up with abuse and harassment, this group of students, academics and residents outnumbers the animal rights campaigners. For Professor Colin Blakemore, it's vital that scientists continue to speak out, explaining the benefits of animal research. I made a decision right at the beginning that I wouldn't just keep my head down and keep silent on the issue. I was so outraged by what was being said about me, my work, and the scientific and clinical value of my work. I just wanted to stand up and shout in my defense. Last year, in response to the animal liberation campaign, the British government introduced new penalties. Those convicted of economic damage will now face up to five years jail. One struggle, one fight! But the activists are unfazed. They know that if Huntingdon or Oxford are forced to close, it would be the end of Britain's multi-billion pound biomedical research industry. The only thing that matters is us. The only thing that matters now is that we finish this job. The only thing that matters now is we stop that animal torture lab from ever opening its doors. And you can do it. You can do it. You believe in it. This is a battle where the outcome won't be based on compromise. If the Oxford lab eventually opens its doors, it'll be a future steeped in controversy and possibly violence at every turn.